So Evangelical Bible has just produced the RSV edition of the Schuyler Quintel. So the Quintel is now in the Revised Standard Version. And this is being met with uh, various reactions because the RSV is a translation that was first completed in the mid-1900s, around 1952. And it was actually known at the time as being more liberal in its leanings. And uh, so people are wondering, why is Evangelical Bible producing the RSV again? On top of that, it's not really a current translation. The RSV has been updated into the NRSV in 1989, I believe. And also, the English Standard Version is a evangelical update of the RSV, a more conservative update of the RSV. So it kind of, to a lot of people, seems unnecessary to have the RSV. But Evangelical Bible does actually have on their website a list of reasons as to why they have chosen to produce the Quintel in the Revised Standard Version. So I'm going to look at these in this video, read through them, and I'd love to hear any thoughts or opinions you have on this. I did a review of the RSV Quintel, and personally for me, I think it's, it's fascinating, it's interesting to see the history of different Bible translations. I've talked about different Bible translations on this channel quite a bit. I own various RSV Bibles, especially a couple of older ones uh, from the time that the RSV was first produced. And I have to say, you know, when we talk about things being liberal, conservative, sometimes things are overstated. Um, I, I think that when you talk about something being liberal, you have to really define what you mean by that. But certainly there is uh, criticism of the RSV for being more liberal. But here is what Evangelical Bible says about this translation being produced in the Quintel. The Revised Standard Version, RSV, is a revision of the American Revised Version, 1901, which was itself a revision of the King James Version, 1611. And the American Revised Version, I think what they're referring to there is the American Standard Version which was really the American edition of the English Revised Version, which I think was completed in 1885. So the RSV is an update of the American Standard Version from 1901. And the ASV was an update, it's saying, or a revision of the King James Version. The RSV was translated by 32 scholars along with 50 representatives of cooperating denominational bodies. The translation committee attempted to stay as close as possible to its rich Tyndale King James heritage. We have resisted the temptation to use phrases that are merely current usage and have sought to put the message of the Bible in simple, enduring words that are worthy to stand in the great Tyndale King James tradition. And that is actually a quote, I think, from the, the committee there as to how they went about translating the, the language that they used in translating the RSV. So Evangelical Bible goes on to say, we've been asked why we have decided to embark on this project since the RSV has been superseded by the NRSV, which is a mainline update of the translation, on the one hand, and the ESV, an evangelical update of the RSV, on the other. So here are a few reasons, and they have listed out here seven reasons for their production of the RSV. Number one, the RSV is an exceedingly accurate and elegant translation. It had long been considered among the most accurate and scholarly translations. So what I'm reading in this is that it is an elegant translation. A lot of people think that it's beautiful. It is more current in its language than the King James Version, and yet it still has an elegance to it. So that's the first reason they're giving for producing the RSV. Number two, the RSV is the father of both the NRSV and ESV. Many people used this translation for 40, 50 years before arrival of the NRSV or ESV. So this is harking back to the history of the, the RSV and the, 
the lineage of Bible translation, the fact that it is basically the parent of the NRSV and ESV, and people used it for decades. It was for a long time a very popular translation from what I understand in certain circles. So there's a history to the RSV, I think, is what's being said here. Number three, there are very few current publications of the RSV. So I think that one of the reasonings they're giving here is they want to make the RSV more accessible, have another print version of the RSV available to people in a very nice format because the RSV is not widely available. It's, it's not being printed that much these days. Number four, there are no RSV Bibles in print with a reference system or concordance glossary. So the Schuyler Quintel is a unique RSV in that it has a reference system with it and a concordance in the back. Um, so those extra study features are something you wouldn't typically see in an RSV Bible. So it has uh, unique features about it. And then number five, the RSV uses thee, thou, lest, art, thy, and other classical English expressions no longer found in modern translations. It provides a unique bridge between the KJV and modern English translations. Now there is a point of clarification that needs to be made here when it talks about using some of these archaic forms, thee and thou. The RSV does not use thee and thou throughout the whole Bible. Uh, I, I heard one video where I think someone misunderstood what was being said here. Uh, their, their use in the RSV of thee and thou is not a plural or singular distinction. It's actually just something that you will read in direct reference to God when people are speaking to God, for example, in prayer in the Psalms or in the Lord's Prayer when there is a direct address to God, deity, people will speak with thee and thou in the RSV. That is the language that is used. Whereas when you see language of interaction with humans, regular people talking to each other, they just use normal English, updated modern English. So the distinction actually has to do with whether it is a direct address to deity or not specifically in terms of prayer to God. And that is actually something that I think, you know, in the early 1900s and in the mid 1900s even, there were still people that when they would pray would use thee and thou as a form of respect. And I even had a teacher when I was a child back in church who when he would pray, normally he would, he would talk in a normal way, but when he would pray, he would say, I thank thee Heavenly Father, and when he would address God, he would use thee and thou and these different forms that you see here because it was a sign of respect for people at that time in their prayer life. So that's the distinction uh, in the way that the RSV uses these words. Number six, the RSV predates gender modification of nouns, pronouns, which are found in most modern translations. Now, I don't really think this point is like by itself a reason for them to produce the RSV. I think they're just trying to list a bunch of reasons here. And they're saying that for some people, this is a pro as opposed to a con when it comes to Bible translation. Uh, there are trends right now toward having a lot of um, gender inclusiveness, or you could just say gender accuracy. Uh, the translation philosophy of some translators is that if Paul, for example, is speaking to men and women, essentially, then you can use the term brothers and sisters as opposed to just being very literal there and only using the word brothers. So that's what uh, a lot of translations have done. Um, whereas in the RSV, you are going to see much more male-centric language because in the mid-1900s, male-centric language was still in high usage. So for people who are more prone to using those traditional forms of English or they're more familiar with it or just prefer it more, that is an advantage to them in having the RSV. Number seven, this is the last reason they give, this RSV will be available with the expanded 1977 Apocrypha and they list out all the books there in the Apocrypha. 
this expanded RSV 1977 expanded edition version of the Apocrypha lends itself to use in Anglican, Orthodox, and Catholic communities. So I think a big reason, and maybe the primary reason, and you could look at it th at this, you could look at this from two different angles, is they're expanding their market because now they're going to have Bibles that are going to appeal even more to Christians that are in the Anglican, Orthodox, and Catholic communities. So one angle is to say that they're expanding their market share by producing this translation. Uh, another way of looking at this or putting it is that they're seeking to serve a, a broader spectrum of the Christian community. There are many Christians who uh, want the Apocrypha in their Bible and they like the RSV and its history. And even I'm sure you could say it's ecumenical approach to things in, in terms of how the RSV has been used in the past. And so, you know, I think they're being frank in saying that they're, they are trying to provide a resource along that lines, something that will be used very broadly in different Christian traditions. Now, a big question with all of this is they are called EvangelicalBible.com, and I'm sure there are going to be some pretty strong opinions from people out there as to at what point are they kind of reaching outside of that space that spectrum or that circle that you would identify as evangelical. Um, and of course, the word evangelical means different things to different people depending on where they live and their personal history and their exposure to different things. Evangelical in America today is often actually identified with very political things. But uh, when I think of evangelical traditionally, I would think more in theological terms of what people believe about the gospel. And so it is interesting here that uh, they are now kind of moving in a direction here that's really appealing to a broader spectrum of Christian tradition than I think beforehand they have. So I'm sure there's going to be different opinions on that, and feel free to drop your opinion, give some thoughts in the comment section below. But those are the reasons that Evangelical Bible gives for their production of the RSV Schuyler Quintel, and that is available with or without the Apocrypha right now on their website. I will leave a link to this in the video description if, if you want to check that out. But thank you so much for taking some time to look at this topic with me, brought to you from a fresh perspective.